Hi, welcome to my other show. My name is Susan Rushton and this is Amuse. This is the show on which I'm, I get to, I'm delighted to, I'm honored to, I'm thrilled to talk to people who are called by the muse. And this muse is the, is, is, is a wonderful muse that talks about, that urges, that pushes people to write. <laughs> I don't know what her name is, but I know the name of my guest. This is Joan Griffin. Thank you, Joan. And I'm, lit, I'm giving you her email, Joan Griff, G-R-I-F-F, -F, at gmail.com. And if you want to know her email, no, 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 her, her website, uh, Joan Griffin, G-R-I-F-F-I-N dot U-S. So, Joan, why have I caught, brought you here? What is it you, you do? Well, it's very exciting because I'm a writer and now I get to call myself an author because I just had my very first book published. So I'm a debut author. A debut. <laughs> debut author. Well, welcome. Yes. Welcome. Good for you. So let us, let's see the name of your bo book. It's Force of Nature. Force it, of Nature. And the subtitle is Three Women Tackle the John Muir Trail. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's about two friends and myself, all in our 50s, a few years ago, walking the 200 mile John Muir Trail through the heart of you the see Sierra. My, my, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> How long is this? It's it was twenty eight days and two hundred miles. Wow! And where is the John Muir Trail? It's in the heart of the Sierra. So it starts. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> it oh. starts in Yosemite and then goes up and down and up and down yeah. and up and down yeah. and up until you get to the top of Whitney. Oh my goodness! And you got to the top of Whitney. We did. Oh my goodness! And then we made it back down, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> wow! What what? got you involved in this? Why did you do this? You know, a lot of reasons, I think, get you out on a long trail like that. Love of nature, wanting to be out in the wilderness and, and get away from pals. civilization, but also that um, kind of that healing power of nature to bring peace when you need it mm -hmm. deeply, right? Um, I won't give the details, but it's in the book. Okay. And, um, but I think ultimately it became that, become one with nature. Hmm. Not many people get to take that length of time, nearly a month, and leave civilization and crowds. I don't. <laughs> right, but you've probably done a week's vacation where you've gotten away from it yeah. all and wished you could stay forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that this was that on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so did you do it in order to, to write this book? No, conversely, I actually, when I went out on the trail, I had absolutely no idea that I would write a book from it. I did take a journal along and kept notes, but more for my own memory. Yeah. But when I came out and back into civilization and tried to describe it verbally to friends, I couldn't, I couldn't get them to see and understand the depth of it. So I decided I had to figure out another way to share what was a life-changing, amazing experience. And so I ended up writing it down mm -hmm. instead. Have you always been a writer or did you, are you suddenly a writer? <laughs> um, I've always wanted to be a writer, mm -hmm. but I ne didn't see myself as a writer until I was in my middle age. And mm -hmm. I was a English language arts reading and writing teacher oh. in middle school. Oh, oh! And I decided I you. loved it. I just want to stop and, and think about you as a middle middle class. I mean, no, seventh and eighth grade. Seventh and eighth grade. Yeah. And how long did you were you a teacher? Seventh. Twenty five years. Oh. in Colfax. <sighs> I I substituted three times in seventh grade, <laughs> and realized I'm. The, they, and they looked at me and said, what have we done to deserve you? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, oh gosh. I but, think junior high teachers have to have a certain personality. You have to understand sarcasm and yeah. that playful nature. But conversely, I could never teach kindergarten. I right. Mean, yeah. It wouldn't work. But I, but I am so ad admiring <laughs> of of seventh and eighth grade, te eighth grade teachers because they're all so beautiful and they are convinced they're ugly. Oh. Just absolutely convinced. They really need an adult <sighs> advocate that's not their parents yeah. because they discount what their parents tell sure, them. Sure, oh, that's them. But oh, if you have mom. a teacher and other adults who are kind of supporting the, the parents' world, then the kids just eat it up. They want to know how to be a good adult. That's all they want. They don't want to look stupid or foolish yeah. or be embarrassed. They yeah. just want to know how to do it. Yeah. And sometimes, well, we're not talking about writing at the moment. But, That's okay. <laughs> but, but sometimes, well, all the time, as an adult, you make stupid mistakes and uh, I all the time as a as a as an adult I make it I make stupid mistakes and say things wrong and and drop stuff in the middle of a crowd and the first time I I was really aware that I did it as a as a grown up I said I turned around and I said that's part of my I'm I'm in I'm taking a class on uh, attracting attention to myself <laughs> and that was a that was a that was my my test. <laughs> How did I do? Okay, so back to, um, so you were a, you were, you are retired? I'm retired, okay. yes. From seventh and eighth grade, and, and you w always wanted to write, and, and now you have. Right, and this was the, the story that allowed me to kind of um, focus that energy. It went from being and I want a, a dream, it went to a plan. You know, kind of like the hike started as a dream and ended up as a plan. Um, so you know, did this. Yes, yeah. so did this. Yeah. And it was such a uh, confidence building, courage building experience being out on the trail like that. It felt like it really empowered each of us who were out there. It really empowered us to take on big challenges because we've done this mm -hmm. and you can do this you, you can, can do, do anything, anything. <laughs> right and that actually kind of gets embedded in you so after I wrote the book I went back and got my master's degree and then I sat down and wrote the book so it was like you get that momentum going yeah and I hope that the book delivers that kind of empowerment to the people that read it too that you can take a dream and you can turn it into a plan, and then you can make it happen. And this is, and writing it and publishing it was another dream. I joke that I thought writing, I mean, that I thought hiking was difficult, but actually <laughs> writing is more difficult. Oh, why is that? <laughs> um, because there's so many layers to it. There's so, you, you don't just do it once and it's done, right? Writers revise and revise and revise and is then that true? editing. Bill T. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then once it's done, then you have to whole, learn a whole new set of skills because you have to promote it and market yeah. it. And you, you've been alone for, for, for months <laughs> and then you have to force yourself right. to be out there. Yeah. Well, you know, I think there is a misconception about writers. You know, in the movies, they show us the writer up in his little apartment uh -huh. in the upper floor with a bottle of whiskey and all two alone. Bottles. Two <laughs> bottles, right. One empty laying down and one standing up. Right. But I think really writing is very much a community thing. You go away by yourself and you write, but then you come back to your community and you get reactions to it. Yes, this is good. We could be, have this, here's how to make it better, mm -hmm. and you do that for each other. So I think reading, writing is really more of a community effort than most people think. Huh. Okay. I yeah. don't think, I wouldn't have finished the book without the community of writers, be it the Gold Country writers in Auburn or the Willow Valley, Valley writers up in, um, you know, Grass Valley. I, don't, I wouldn't have finished the book without them. Wow. Not okay. a, not a chance. The encouragement and all. Okay, and briefly, you mentioned Gold Country Writers. Yes. GoldCountryWriters.com. 
again, goldcountrywriters.com. It's a, it's a group of writers that, is, that has been around for at least a decade, maybe more. Um, and and it, it's, it, you, it's started out very small and now it's very large. Yeah. It is. I think there are well over 50 members. Yeah. And they meet weekly and support writers from beginning writers to multiply published mm -hmm. writers in every aspect yeah. of writing. They're a great group. Yes, yes, and they helped you. Mm -hmm. um, so, when when did the, when did you publish this? Last week, last Thursday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tomorrow wow. will be a week. Oh boy! I know it's exciting. Yes. Yes, that's that's thrilling. And how many boxes do you have? How many boxes of books? We'll have boxes of five, five boxes <laughs> of books yeah. that I have. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have one in my car wherever I go now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, and you are get, get, getting working to uh, get. Up, up the opportunity to publish, not publish, to talk about your book. Absolutely. Where, where, where do you talk next? Um, well, I have this Friday, I'm doing a Zoom with Ollie, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at Sierra College. I'm doing a Zoom with my two hiking partners from the from the book, we're doing the brown bag program there. And then the following week, I have a big launch event here in Auburn at the Canyon View Community Center. Mm -hmm. um, big, kind of a birthday party, you know, with everything except balloons, but uh -huh. basically a birthday party yeah. for the book. And then a couple weeks later, I have another launch event up at Wild Eye Pub in Grass Valley. Okay. And um, I have a couple of store and library events lined up too. Great. And all of these are in indicated on joangriffin.us. Exactly. Okay. okay. Exactly. So if you if you if you've missed this though these the the early ones you can figure out the later ones. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And are has it so have you spoken about this yet? Of course you have. Of course you have. You did uh, did on Ollie. Yes, I did okay. an Ollie last Tuesday. Okay. And is it nerve wracking to talk about him about the book? I am nervous always going in. Of course, uh, I think everyone is before they go to into public speaking. But I've been a teacher for so long. Once I get rolling, uh -huh. I'm I'm pretty comfortable. But it is my baby. You know, and I want, I want people oh, to love it. I don't understand. It. What do you mean it's your baby? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> of course, <laughs> well, it took and... <laughs> a decade to, of gestation to birth it, not nine months. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What was the best part of writing that? When I, what was one of the best parts of writing it? One of the, I think the best part of writing about experiences is that you get to experience them again. Okay. That what you try and do is create something that's so vivid that it actually transports the reader into the place you're describing, into the events that you're describing. But you also get to transport yourself back into it mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So I think that's one of the joys of writing about your own life. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for writers who are or who want to, people who want to write who are who are watching or beginning writers who are watching, what's the hardest part? What's the hardest part uh -huh. about writing? I think getting over the hump of allowing someone else to read what you've written, mm. and I. I think that's very important because once you get used to sharing, you realize how that cycle of sharing and feedback and rewriting and then is a is a growth experience and you get better and better and your confidence grows and your writing gets better. But I do think that initial leap of letting people see letting people see it is really is really hard, yeah. right? Yeah. 
because you, if if you're a beginner, you want you, you want to do this, but you're not sure. And how I think to people who want to write read a lot, right? That's your inspiration. So you read professional writing and you have this <laughs> high level of expectation yeah. for yourself and yeah. then you go write and oh my gosh, it doesn't sound like what I thought I was going to put on the page. Mm -hmm. So it takes a while to get there. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I'm remembering reading a wonderful book when I was 17 or 18 and not being, realizing, wait a minute, I'm not reading this, I'm up here watching down where, the, while the, while the, while the wind blows, blows the ocean into the, into the boat. I'm, I'm watching this, I'm not reading about it. Right, it, you're it in it. it. Yes. Yeah. It made it very clear to me what good writing is. It's not, it's not writing that attracts attention to itself. It's writing that makes you move someplace else. Right. It yeah. sucks you into it. And I hope people who read this book find themselves on the top of the mountain in the electrical storm. And they find <laughs> themselves um, dancing with the shadows at midnight because the moon's so bright. You know, oh, I hope my. that they're there yeah. with me. And that was my goal. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. So, so um, I, I want to move back to Ollie. Yes. It, are you are you um, are you a teacher with Ollie or? I'm an instructor, instructor with Ollie, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at Sierra. I'm also currently on the advisory council at Ollie as well. So I've got myself, you know, knee deep in uh -huh. in the organization, which for those who don't know is a is a program of academic courses for those of us who are 55 and better. 55 and better. Better. <laughs> <laughs> Bill doesn't laugh very often, but he's certainly laughing now. Um, so what do you, what, you, you did a, a piece about the book for Ollie. Yes. And, and what else do you, Quote, I teach. regularly teach uh, literature courses. We're currently discussing the book Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, uh, delving into it more than a book club, a real book discussion uh -huh. club. And I teach uh, women's history. So I have a whole series of classes on the First Ladies from Martha to Eleanor. Uh -huh. uh, I think I have 32 classes. And I teach writing as well. When you were when you were teaching seventh and eighth grade, where you were teaching writing, I was teaching writing yeah. and literature, and because it was at a small school, and I had to be a jack of all trades, I've taught everything mm -hmm. from PE to math. But yeah. I always Focus. always taught English yeah. language yeah. arts. Yes, okay, my love. Yes, oh, English teachers. <laughs> Here we are. I don't use a red pencil. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> Neither did I. I used a regular pencil and and asked questions instead of saying, well, "Why did you do? It? How how did you?" Instead of saying, "Wrong," um, I think <laughs> I think that's what I did. Um, what advice do you have for writers who are who are listening, watching? I think Nike's slogan is as good as any, just do it. Don't be hesitant, take little bites, start small, seek out a writing community. Mm -hmm. I think once you decide that you really want to write and you've dabbled just a little, then you need to go seek out a writing community because that will keep you going. It will motivate you. It will pull you along and push you along when you need pushing. Yeah, okay. I remember being with a writing group and I had, I had a problem with one, a big problem with one of this, one of, one of the things that this woman had, had written and I pointed it out to her and she was really offended. And that, oh dear, oh dear. Um, I didn't mean to offend her. Mm -hmm. What I w wanted to do was make it clear that there's, there's a 
problem here and you could there's something you can do about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's either, I think that's the only problem I had ever when I was teaching writing. And I, that critiquing process uh, is something that you, I think, learn to do over time. Both give gentle critique mm -hmm. and receive critique without losing face. Being offended. You know? yeah. Yes, yeah. it's a very important part of the process. Yeah, wow, okay. Um, so how, when, so you are with um, Gold Country Writers, mm -hmm. how often do you meet with them? They meet weekly, every Wednesday, and have a, a schedule of speakers and critiquing. I always make it to their third Wednesday when they hold their speakers. Sometimes it's a lesson, sometimes it's just a, um, you know, a focus on a, an author. Mm -hmm. And I try and get to the critiquing occasionally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I probably, when the, the chaos around the book release is over, I'll be able to get back to them mm -hmm. more often. But um, I find them really valuable. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Especially when I'm starting something new, have something that I want to bring in and see, is this working? So I love to go to the celebrations on the third, third Wednesday and occasionally go to the critiques. Okay. But I have a couple of other critique groups that I meet mm -hmm. with like every three or four weeks, like religiously. Mm -hmm. Are you writing something else? Or do right. you have Writers time never <laughs> stop, right? <laughs> what, what I, have, I have had to push the pause button a little bit right now, but I am writing another memoir, but I was adopted as a ch baby in the 50s, mm -hmm. which is which means not not an uncommon experience right. back in the day yeah. and like so many others with the DNA um, you know ancestry DNA or um, one of the other services uh -huh. we're learning who our birth families mm -hmm. were and I am writing about that because I think mine's a little unique because I've met both sides and I obviously know my adoptive parents uh -huh. and their stories don't jive Hmm. They're all a little different. So I think that's fascinating mm -hmm. how yeah. families pass on legend, which may or may not be truth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So sound, that sounds perfect for a, a, a book. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, ha, do you plan on writing fiction? I have only dabbled in it. So it's not the next thing on my list. Okay. No. Okay. Where can we find your book? Um, you can find my book on Amazon, of course. Tell them you can that. also <laughs> find it at local bookstores and anywhere where books are sold, actually. Okay. It's out there everywhere. Good. Yes. Good. So in, in Roseville and and in at the bookstore on Lincoln Way. Uh, Winston Smith. Winston Smith. Yes, and the yes. bookseller up in Grass Valley. Yes. Okay. Winston Smith. Yes. I love that book. That bookstore. Um, okay. Who is one of your favorite authors? I think my favorite favorite all-time author is probably probably Barbara Kingsolver. <laughs> you know? Okay, yes. Yes, I, I fell in love with her writing style when I read uh, Prodigal Summer, and then I've gone back and read everything else, and I think her most recent one, what is it called? Um, Demon remember. Copperhead yeah. is so multi-layered, so vivid, but and her characters you love them or you hate them there's nothing in between <laughs> yeah. and and there's always a little social commentary in always. there too yeah that makes me feel like i'm reading something of value as mm -hmm. well as a wonderful story yeah so i think she's probably my all-time okay so that's one of your favorite books um what is your we may have, I think we've talked about this, but let's talk about it again because we can never say it long enough or often enough. What is your advice for writers? I, I think to not do it alone, to find a writing community, and then to do something I'm not 
as good at, and that is be consistent. Choose a time and a place <laughs> and a regularity <laughs> and do it. Just like you're supposed to walk every day and you're supposed to do your squats oh, every day yeah. and take your vitamins every day. You sit down for, if it's 20 minutes or if an it's hour. Ten, is it 10 o'clock? Well, sit down. Right. Okay. Sit down. Just pause and write. Yes. It, do you do that? No. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, oh, gee. It is oh, the gee. right thing to do, right? Yeah. And I do it from time to time, and then I fall off, just like I fall off my exercise uh -huh. routine, and then I have to get back on and do it. But I think it's, it's something you have to want to do, not have to do. Yeah. Yes. Right? Okay. It's not a should. It's a want. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, yes. Yeah. So every Wednesday night, that's when I write my column. I exactly. Should, I should write it on Tuesday or Monday, but I, Wednesday night I write it. Mm -hmm. <gasps> but okay. they say if you put things off, procrastinate to the end, that the creative juices really flow. Does that happen with you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Ugh, geez. Um, what do you read? A little of everything. I'm one of those voracious readers who reads, you know, eight or ten books a month. And I read... A, <gasps> wow! And I read a lot of nonfiction, but I read a lot of, like, good literary fiction. But I also read a lot of murder mysteries. So a little bit of everything. Okay. That's wonderful. Um, okay. I think that's what we have. I, I wish you the best of luck with this book and with, Thank with you. your other one. Thank you. Um, Joan Griffin, J-O-A-N-G-R-I-F-F-I-N dot U-S, and that, that website leads you to a variety of other places. Um, and you might also want to uh, in, investigate Ollie, O L L I, and you could go on uh, go on G, Google, and uh, figure that out. Joan, thank you very much for being. Thank you. My guest. It was my pleasure. Good. It was mine too. And good luck with your book. Thank you. Yes, and thank you for watching. I'll see you again. <laughs>